last book I read that wasn't directly related to evolution was 1984, and even that turned out to be, you know, very relevant. <laughs> I used to love reading uh, Ian Fleming books, James Bond, you know. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I think when I, when I get tired of uh, staring at my computer screen and typing or moving my mouse, I do jigsaw puzzles. You know, the, the pieces fit together. There's a, there's a picture that makes sense. And <laughs> if I stick at it, uh, you know, the pieces all go together. <laughs> uh, something else I like to do is feed birds. We have quite a bird population around our house. Uh, it's a small town, not big city. And uh, we have bird feeders out back and I keep them well stocked and I just enjoy watching the birds. And when I look at them, I think, how could anyone possibly, any rational person possibly think that these creatures evolved without guidance? I am an ex-con, yes. Um, I spent a year and a half in prison uh, in the 60s, the 1960s. I was drafted in 1964, having dropped out of college. Uh, I spent two years on active duty with the U.S. Army, was separated to reserve status. In those days, the obligation was for six years total. I did two years active, and then I had four years of reserve obligation. So by then, the Vietnam War had escalated quite a bit. Uh, I was called back. By then, I was a transfer student at Berkeley quite the hotbed of anti-war activity in those days. So I wrote a polite letter to the command and said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't come back. I can't put on the uniform again. And uh, gave a big speech on the steps of Sproul Plaza at Berkeley. Uh, the news media were there and I announced my intention not to serve anymore. So uh, I thought uh, they would come arrest me very quickly but they waited until things died down. And about two months later, I was leaving my apartment uh, in the morning. Streets were all quiet. And a big black limousine roared up and three men jumped out and threw me in the back seat. It was like something from a grade B movie. <laughs> and we drove off to the Presidio stockade and I spent the next year and a half in prison. Uh, at the time, I was opposed to the Vietnam War. I. Uh, as I look back, I think I was mistaken in my evaluation of it. I mean, I think it was badly conducted, but uh, at the time I didn't see the danger of communism, which I came to see later, actually shortly after getting out of prison. But I did what my conscience uh, told me I should do, and I, I've never regretted it. After I was arrested, I was in the Presidio stockade in San Francisco for four months. Since I had sworn in my letter to the Army not to put on the uniform again, and they wouldn't let me wear my civilian clothes, I had to spend those four months in solitary confinement, wrapped in a blanket. Um, when it was uh, time for them to ship me to Leavenworth, where I did the re remainder of my prison time, they forcibly put the uniform on me and took me to the airport. In those days, they transported prisoners by civilian aircraft, prisoners in my situation. But because they weren't sure whether I was going to take the uniform off in a public place, they sent three guards with me, uh, not knowing whether I would cooperate. Of course, I, I had no plan to not cooperate at that point. I knew I was going to Leavenworth, and that was the end of it. And I hadn't put the uniform on myself. Uh, when we got to the airport and we were walking up to the gate, uh, the two ladies behind the counter turned white as a sheet. And I heard one of them say to the other, my god, three guards? I figured they must have thought I was a serial killer or something. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Mm -hmm.